Uh, good day, YouTubers. And how you been? Yes, it's me again. And today, yet more work to do on the Discovery TD5. This time, uh, hub bearings, or hub bearing. Um, you may also have come across a similar problem once in a while. Uh, you, you go around a bend, a left or a right, and on one, one bend, you get a very noisy hum, sort of a mm, kind of coming from the front of the car, which sort of disappears when you straighten up or you turn in the opposite direction. And I'm getting that problem. Uh, when I turn to the left, around a bend, I'm getting a hum from the right-hand side. And I've diagnosed, or I believe, it is the hub bearing. Um, and I'll find out now by jacking up this side of the car and checking for play in the wheel. So let's do that now. So with the wheel jacked up off the ground and the other side uh, chopped on both wheels, let's check this for f fall free play. wheel bearing is knackered and that's a technical term um, a way to check whether it's that or the swivel hub is if it was a swivel hub you'd have free play that way but you wouldn't have any free play that way but because I'm getting free play in both directions I know it's a wheel bearing okay but to make sure that this isn't just a little bit of free play and the real culprit is on the other side with a huge amount of free play, um, I'll just check the other side as well. Because on the left hand side, uh, if we check the play in that, there's absolutely nothing. So the reason I thought it was the right hand side is because it was only making the noise when going around a left hand bend, which means turning to the left, it was waiting, putting more weight and force on the right hand side, which was making the right hand wheel bearing protest more. So let's get back to it. And so we get down to the nitty gritty of fixing it. And it's worth pointing out with the Discovery 2s that it's not possible to change the hub bearing itself. You have to change the hub with the bearing and the ABS sensor and wire all as a single unit. Um, so I've ordered one of those from Paddocks. It's £79.95 and I've had to pay extra for next day delivery because I need this fairly quick. So the first job to do will be to get the wheel nuts off, which I shall do right now. So with the wheel off, you then need to undo this. This will be pushed in, this, the tang on this nut, you need to basically get it opened up again so that you can get the uh, nut undone, which are notoriously extremely tight. So the way to do that is to, uh, we have to put the wheel back on and just do the nuts up loosely for now. Lower the car back down to the ground and take the center out of the wheel and then put the bolt, the, the socket, through that. So that's what I'll do next. Right, so it'll either be that it is extremely tight or it's not. So, yeah, I've got my socket in the hole. 
I'm using it's it's a good fit. I'm using a 32 uh, millimeter socket, but it may be a 31. Um, but a 32 is a good fit. So, and it's a big nut with not many flats on it. So it should, in theory, be okay. <coughs> so we take the uh, socket with the extension on it, and it's very. Uh, very close to the wheel arch. Let's try that. Oof. Wow, that is tight. Okay, let's see. Um, I'll try the foot. The foot method. Yeah. If that doesn't work, I have to come up with some other idea. Try not to break my socket. Oh yeah, there we go. And that's the way you do it. Oof. That's a relief, I say. Okay, that's nice and uh, loose now. So I'll now jack the car back up, take the wheel off, and finish removing the nut. And with the hub nut removed, I've now I've turned the steering to the left and I've also loosened the uh, lower caliper um, bolt which is a 12 mil bolt and I've also I've also around the back here I don't know if you can see it that's the lower caliper mounting uh, bolt and the top caliper mounting bolt which is just in there down in there uh, to do that I unclipped so I can move about the um, once it focuses there we go. I unclipped the ABS pipe sensor pipe tube cable whatever you want to call it so I'll now continue to remove this here because in order to get the disc off uh, I need to take the pads out you know, in order to get the caliper off I need to take the pads out um, as there's quite a lip on this disc so I'll be replacing this disc as well and I'll do the other side at some point as well so first of all let's uh, sort this out so I need to get the pads out. With the lower bolt removed, not my caliper, it's a case of pulling it up. A little bit stiff. And then I can remove one pad, which is actually in very good condition, but I'm changing the uh, disc. So, because MOT's probably about three months away, so I might as well do it while I'm at it. Is my uh, that's my theory anyway. So there we go. So I shall just plunk that down. Um, right. So next job, I can take out the two caliper mounting bolts and take the caliper off. Um, have a piece of string handy, ready to tie it up at a convenient point, such as the uh, spring. So that's what I'll do next. So with the top bolt removed, very carefully remove the caliper, being careful not to strain in any way the hydraulic pipe for obvious reasons. So I'm going to put the, put the string through there, it can, uh, can hang about like that. Okay. And then the string helps to have horses because then you've got access to thousands of meters of old baler twine and you tie it up like so so that's the caliper sorted there there we 
we go. Don't want any strain on this pipe. And then it's a case of removing the rest of the caliper carrier system. And the bottom bolts out, and then followed by eventually. in the ABS pipe and there we go and then for safekeeping I shall screw these two bolts back in to the caliper carrier et voila et voila and there you go then we just need to, to get the disc off need to remove this little uh, screw right by here Phillips head screw, so the best way really, safe struggling is an impact driver with the largest cross head Phillips head posi drive bit you can think of, set it to undo, and then with a big hammer, twist and bang, and there we go. Oop, and then drop the hole up on the floor. get the disc finally off it'll probably be a tight fit if it is especially if you're changing the the disc itself very gently with a with a hammer just on the on the actual corner on the edge of the thing just give it a tap turn it a little bit just very gently As you can see, it's starting to, it's coming. So it should, in theory, just pull off now. Yeah, here we come. And there we go. One old disc. Yeah. And now to the next part, which will be removing the mud shield. Down there, that bolt there and a bolt around the side there tiny little ones about eight mil by the look of them so i'll get that off and as you would expect um, these uh, mounting mud shield mounting bolts are very tight so rather than risking rounding them off i shall give them a good attack with a blowtorch until it gets very, very hot. cooled down a bit I've got my impact driver set up and as before with this, the other thing turn and give it a whack and there we go so I shall do that with the rest of them Remembering not to whack your hand in the process. That one done. And the last one. There we go. That saves a lot of tears. shield comes away and not forgetting this bracket here which holds the ABS sensor wire so you've got to remember to replace that in between the mud shield 
and the hub carrier. And then the mount key, and very carefully, so we don't want to round the arm bolt over, very carefully remove, now it's nice and loose, the bolt holding the ABS sensor in. The new hub comes with an ABS sensor already wired in it, um, which is nice. Feed the wire through there. There we go. A lot of old crud on the bottom of that. Like I say, its ABS sensor is already wired in there. So it's a case of unplugging it further along up in the car. Right, I'm now at the point where I'm removing the four bolts which hold the hub in place. I've taken one out here. You get new ones of these with the hub kit, with the new hub and bearing. Uh, so I've just got to, I've loosened these ones off. I've turned the steering in the opposite direction in order to gain access to, if you can see it, that bolt there, and that is the lower one which comes out there. So it's two there, one there, and there's one on the other side as well. So I shall just remove this one, which has been easier said than done, but always make sure that you've got all the rubbish off, off the old off the bolt head and it's absolutely sat on there because you don't want these things rounding off otherwise you're into nightmare situations so using the socket and an extension this should go as well and there we go nice and steady You can imagine there's been loads of occasions where these bolts have been rounded off and you're just into lots of unnecessary work then so just being careful and thinking about every single every single step every twist of the socket set and you should be okay so I'll now remove the rest, the other two of these bolts. Almost there now. All the bolts are removed. It's necessary to turn the steering this way and that way in order to get some of the bolts out because parts of the uh, hub carrier are in the way. Um, now we're at the stage we will be removing the hub itself and the drive shaft will be coming out as well, attached to it. So. It's quite stiff, so I'm going to give it a tap or 12. Here we go. Good job this isn't being used again because I'd have to get a new bearing. Mind you, the uh, punishment that these bearings take as a wheel. Uh, is more than I can give with this hammer. And there we go. Okay. So, rather refreshingly, the drive shaft stayed where it is and come off the hub. Now the Haynes manual says that you may have to use a press to get these out of the hub um, or tap it with a like a soft metal drift and a hammer but fortunately it's uh, it stayed where it is which is nice so I shall leave that there for now and that 
is it is all I can do today because the hub's on order and that will be here tomorrow just a quick look at the old hub it's a remarkable piece of engineering because it's actually quite small I mean there's my hand and I haven't got huge hands um, there was a rubber seal there which I've ripped out um, but yeah it is you can oh, people have claimed to have repaired these but I mean by the time you get the new bearing take it somewhere with a press if they'll even attempt it for the for 65 quid including new fixing bolts and hub nut with an ABS sensor already in it hub bearing it's not really uh, it's not worth the hassle to be honest um, but it is it's very noisy don't know if we can uh, shot so this is what it looks like after you've got the hub off I shall now clear up and I'll see you tomorrow